Okay, welcome back. Newsflash, Andrew Cuomo does not always play well with others, um, <laughs> and Andrew Cuomo does not like sharing uh, spotlights or major news with others, and that includes, particularly some would argue, fellow Democrats. Well, if you saw the Times story today, um, they not only echoed that, but they put an exclamation point on it, and they talk about the $613 million uh, settlement here um, that the Attorney General helped secure here, and Cuomo uh, and uh, Mr. Schneiderman are not exactly on the same page as to where that J.P. Morgan dollars ought to go. Um, and more than that, the governor's been taking some shots directly and indirectly. Take a look at his money quote. He asked people if they think Eric Schneiderman wears eyeliner. Schneiderman believes that Cuomo's administration is Machiavellian and out to undermine him. And uh, a gentleman here, um, you just have to talk to Mr. Tom DiNapoli. He can give you exhibit A, B, C, all the way through Z about having his legs cut out um, by the governor. Uh, you're close to this. Uh, these sentiments by fellow Democrats that the governor won't give anybody, you know, a scintilla of, of airtime without either stepping on top of it or hogging it, um, this is nothing new, right? Nothing new. This is their show. They, they want to run their, their show to, to the fullest extent, no question. And listen, Schneiderman's been in the news a lot nationally. I mean, he's sort of been the leading attorney general on a lot of these issues, including foreclosures and what happened on Wall Street uh, during the end of 2008. Uh, two, two very ambitious politicians that want to move up the, the ladder. But, and but historically, though, John, it's true. But the M.O. of Cuomo is a little bit different. If you think about when he was the attorney general and we think about when Elliot Spitzer was the attorney general, they acted and were able to operate in a lot more unfettered way than it seems that this attorney general can. It, it seems that the Albany or at least the press office um, of the Cuomo folks, uh, you know, they're leaking stuff, they're stepping on top of the guy's story more than we're used to seeing. Fair? Very fair. Yeah. This is this is this is how they this is how they operate. I mean, you know. And Dominic, this is, you how say it this is. is nothing new. This is the MO. Absolutely nothing new. The only thing that's new is that it's reached page one of the New York Times. Um, when I had, and this person has to remain nameless, I had breakfast with someone about a year ago. And the person, I'll never forget, they put their coffee on the table and he said, I should have ruined Andrew's career when I had a chance to and not let him come back. This is the way that all of these guys think. They look at each and every about other person. Him or just about each other? About each other. Mm -hmm. They look at each and every person as a possible threat. Yeah. You might be a friend today, or I'll let you shine, but only as much as I want you to shine. That's Governor Cuomo, to be honest with you. This hurts. Was it, would it would be a name we know. <laughs> it's, a name, it's, a, it's a name that every viewer yeah, watching every the show knows. Every yeah. person. A major, major Democrat. But just remind everybody, if we remember, the comments that he said um, that went over Andrew Cuomo, then candidate Cuomo, that went over really bad over Carl McCall, mm -hmm. right? A lot mm -hmm. of people thought mm -hmm. that they were not only insensitive, wrong, but that he just, he never would get there. He got there, but I can't remember a governor who has triangulated so much. He's got, think about it, has he campaigned for any Democrats across the state? I must have missed it, right? Uh, you're being few. quiet here, but few. very few. few. He likes the arrangement with Jeff Klein right now, where he's kind of got this <laughs> trifecta going on. He could be a Republican on every <laughs> financial issue, but he's progressive on, on the social issues, and it's working for him, but God uh, God help you if you get in the middle of his way. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, I, and again, I'll, some of this was kind of new to me because a lot of it went down. I wasn't even, I wasn't living here in, in New York when a lot of this uh, uh, headbutting happened. But, uh, you know, that is his M.O. Look, hey, a bit of a megalomaniac. It's your, your New York royalty. Uh, and, and as the Times article mentioned, you know, born and bred in Queens. Uh, you know, there's a certain street thing. And look, he is Mario Cuomo's son. So. Yeah. But it's not just him, Richard. It's not just him. I don't remember, though, a more controlled, and, and, and kudos to him for pulling it off, I don't remember anybody who's been able to, A, manage the media the way they have without giving anything, and then conversely also stifle so many other ambitious New Yorkers who want other office. Okay, now let's speak about New York and on the other side of the aisle. You ask me how bad things are with the grand old party in New York. Well, the chairman, he's a friend of the show here, is pleading with GOP electeds not to endorse the Democratic governor 
That's right, the aforementioned Mario and Andrew Cuomo. Okay, <laughs> see, I've been around too long. Now, the Cuomo administration, well known um, for what we talked about, the heavy-handed tactics in winning support, but for the sake of New York's future, he writes, this is again, out of the words of Ed Cox, I hope I can count on Republicans such as yourself to be strong and live up to a Republican convictions Oy vey. Oy for him to be me. asking yeah. Republicans not to endorse Cuomo, forget about it. He doesn't even mention Astorito. Please, please is don't it, abandon Maybe he's us. afraid Cuomo's going to close the George Washington Bridge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this side of the, or the, or the tap and Z. You know. Hey, look, it, it, this, this, this does speak of, you know, talking about the heavy-handed nature of the Cuomo. This is New York, is it not? This is the with the Sh the Sheldon Silvers ruling with a gentle iron fist. You do. N I have been stunned. The people on my shows um, on WVOX with me, uh, the politicians who just will not speak out against the Sheldon Silvers of the world. And you have and, and look. That's this is the thing. Ed Cox. Uh, he has to make sure. That uh, that he gets to his Republicans before the Cuomo's or somebody else in Albany does because we this is know, New York. It's his job as, yeah. a, as a as a leader for sure. But ultimately, Oof, I mean, you look at his record. Look you look good. at the. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just bad. It shows no. So it shows weakness on their part. It shows that they they don't have much of an agenda. They have no footing really. Is it weakness so on their they, part, or does it speak to the overly thuggish ways of Albany? No, no. no. I, I think it's an indictment no. that there's been no bench developed for the Republicans. You think about yeah. whatever you say. You had for a long time, maybe you call them Republicans in name only, you had Republican mayors in New York City. Sure. You had Governor Pataki, one that long ago, right. okay? And the idea that you got a, the Wendy Longs of the world, the Senate yeah. candidates, I can go the, through you all have, You the have the Rob Astor of the world. The party nationally has moved further to the right. New York has moved somewhat more to the left. The party, the Republican Party, is more out of step with where New York is right now than it has been in general. You know what, though? You know and what, though? What, and, 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 and right yeah. here, just outside the, the walls of, of these studios, a two-to-one Democrat county, as well-moneyed mm -hmm. as Westchester, voted a Republican, a conservative Republican, in massive mandate numbers. But that that wasn't, says something. Doesn't say but everything. That wasn't says a something. good race. I mean, that that wasn't. Yeah. That, that wasn't and I, and a good I still race wouldn't at take all. odds okay. on the beating Cuomo. Now. now, this next one I want your take on because uh, you know uh, of whom we speak here, Congressman Grimm from Staten Island. Uh, his girlfriend was arrested. Uh, this had to do with the story that's been percolating for a long time. This is to do with the 2010 campaign, questions about the donations. Well, we now know she made, or at least the allegation is that she made some phony donations to it. How come this took so long? I mean, we're, we're, you know, this has been going on forever here. And a lot of people really thought, I talked to a lot of people, that this guy, he was going to make it a couple of years ago, last year. And, and we're still talking about this. No one's alleging he did anything criminal here, but obviously someone Yet. very close to him did. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, I was on the ground in 2010 working for the Democratic incumbent the Mike McMahon, McMahon at the time, yeah. and we we were un we were looking at these filings like every campaign does to uncover whether somebody, you know, whether there's a, somebody questionable in the filing and whatnot. We saw people that never gave money before to any politician in their lives cutting maximum $5,000 checks, and we thought it was bizarre, and we were notified uh, people in the media and others about it. And it's just a long process. I mean, the New York Times in January 2011, front page story about how the FBI and others were looking into this matter. It's still going on. You look at the last filing that the federal guys just filed, uh, I think a week ago, Grimm's amassed over a million dollars in legal fees. This is no, this is no joke. Uh, I got got sense, is Grimm on the ballot this November? No, I think uh, yeah. we were Fisella? talking about this before. I think Vito Fisella would not be chirping and not be talking, not be trying to stay relevant and in the press if uh, he felt that Grimm was going to survive, because I feel as if he wants to immediately step in and be this sort of saving grace as a guy people know and like. A lot of people mm -hmm. still really like Mick Vito Fisella. McMahon going to run again? Uh, not, in 2014, uh, not in 2014, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> what no. year are we? <laughs> no. <laughs> We've got to figure out what year we no. are. Okay. <laughs> um, when we come back, everybody, uh, unfortunately, this is uh, a story all too familiar. Gun violence, tragic gun violence, and uh, what I'm going to go around the table is why should we think that anything is going to change? Um, we'll talk about that after this.